Welcome to our review on proteins. So what we actually need to know about then are four key types of protein that are found in living things. So the first one that we come across then is this protein called collagen. Now this is what's called a structural protein and what we find is that this is one of those proteins that's going to make up a large number of those structural parts of an organism. So things like the skin, the bones, the tendons, the ligaments, the cartilage, the blood vessel walls, all contain this collagen. The second protein we need to know about is one we've already met in our core science, which is insulin. Now, this is what's called a globular protein, and it's a hormone. Now, the insulin itself is made in the pancreas, if we remember from our biology from year 10. And what it's actually going to do is then travel through the bloodstream to its target organs. And in this case, we're talking about the muscles and the liver. And the whole purpose of this hormone, this insulin, is to regulate the blood sugar level. The third protein we need to know about is hemoglobin. Now, this is what's called a carrier protein. And the reason it's a carrier protein is because its whole purpose is to carry oxygen from your lungs to the respiring cells of your body. Now, it can't do that on its own. What we find is it's actually contained within the red blood cells. So hemoglobin then is the carrier protein, carries oxygen around your body in the red blood cells. The fourth type of protein that's of great importance to us are the enzymes. Now, we have talked about enzymes previously, and what we mean by an enzyme, then, is a chemical that's going to catalyze chemical reactions in your cells and in your digestive tract. So, what the catalyze actually means is that it's going to speed up the rate of those reactions. Now, obviously, those four proteins aren't an exhaustive list. There are loads of proteins in living things. So some other important ones that we should just be aware of are the antibodies, which are all to do with helping us fight off infections in our body. We have receptors for those hormones on the different membranes of target cells around our bodies. And then we've also got these protein channels in cell membranes that will allow certain substances to cross that wouldn't otherwise be able to. Last thing we really need to be aware of then is the fact that inside our body, what we have are a variety of different cells that are all designed to carry out different jobs. Now, in order to do this, what they actually need then are different enzymes, because inside each of those cells that are trying to carry out a specific job will be certain chemical reactions that have to take place. And each chemical reaction has its own enzyme. So what we then find is going back to what we said at the start of our B3 topic, those genes that code for the enzymes that are needed will be switched on in that cell. Obviously, if the cell doesn't need those enzymes, the genes are switched off. We also find the same thing is true of certain proteins. So as we've said, insulin, for example, we don't need every cell in our body to make insulin. What we need is just the cells in our pancreas to make it. So the gene, that controls insulin is switched on in the pancreas, but switched off in all other cells in our body.